thank you so much for joining us today for our donor box power up nonprofit fundraising boot camp and Again, my name is Jenna, and I am the nonprofit advocate here at DonorBox. We also have Abajoy and Sophie behind the scenes today helping out everybody. If uh, you can give them a wave hello, they'll be um, helping um, launch some links and answer some questions within the chat. So thanks for being here, you guys. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with DonorBox, we provide nonprofits with simple and effective tools to manage their online fundraising activities and connect with individual donors on a deeper level. To date, we have helped 50,000 organizations around the globe raise over $900 million. To learn more, you can visit us on our site at donorbox.org. And today, we created this Power Up series to inspire our current and potential donor box users to get ready for the biggest giving season of the year and end 2021 with a bang. I think we all need this. Giving Tuesday and year end are both coming up really quickly. Giving Tuesdays in November, we're gonna blink and it's gonna be here. So the time to start preparing is right now. In these sessions, we just helped you optimize your donation pages in level one. And you're gonna learn how to engage and manage your donors, track growth, and launch your next big fundraising campaign armed with impactful strategies that have proven success. So we'll be hosting a one hour session every Tuesday at 2 p.m. through October 5th to keep the momentum going. We're keeping our energy up, you guys. But don't worry, if you cannot attend one of the sessions, that's okay. We have got you covered as we always do. You'll receive the recording and all the resources mentioned via email the next day. So be patient with us. We always work really hard to gather all those resources and the recording for you. And you will see that in your inbox tomorrow. Okay, so we'll also provide you with a couple of actionable tasks at the end of each session. These will only take you just a few minutes to complete and they'll help you apply what you've learned in these sessions to your fundraising initiatives. And you'll be able to share, share your work in our Power Up discussion forum, ask questions, and get feedback from the community managers and your peers. This is really cool. If you complete all of these super easy, actionable tasks, at the end of our fourth session on October 5th, you'll be more than ready to launch your next big fundraising campaign, I promise. Okay, so without further ado, are we ready to get started? Do we have energy? Are we pumped up? Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay, so you have made it to level two engaged. Now that you have optimized your donation page and form in level one, you put your donate button front and center on your website and in your blogs and in your emails and enabled a crowdfunding page, you are ready to take on level two. Today, we'll be talking about communication and engagement tools to strengthen donor trust. The power of technology is impacting the world. We all know this. And with it, we're able to connect and build relationships like never before. And I know, I, I'm gonna be this person, I know you've heard this statement at least a million times before, but building trusting relationships with your donors is the key to retention and engagement. Getting a first time donation is only the first step in the door. From there, you have to engage with your donors and show them the impact that they can have with the right strategy and a little care, or as I like to call it, Abajoy is gonna laugh at this, a little TLC, you can convert them into lifetime givers for your nonprofit. And this should absolutely be your goal. So we built this session to help you do that. This is what we're gonna cover today. <laughs> Abajoy's laughing, thank you. <laughs> so this is what we're gonna cover today. The three stages of the donor engagement cycle. 
how to personalize your communications for your donors, how to create a system of recognition for your donors, and how to make giving easy for your donors. So pretty straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start in true fashion. Abjoy, if you could please launch our first poll. Did you attend our level one session? So far, 100% have said yes. We'll give it just a little bit longer. Some haven't attended, some watch the recording. Give it just a few more seconds. Okay. So the majority of you did attend level one. That is great. Uh, some of you didn't attend. Uh, we will share the link for the recording for level one so that you can truly take advantage of the entire Power Up series. And some of you watched the recording. I'm so glad that you were able to do that. All right, now, another question coming at you. If you attended level one, or if you watched the recording, did you complete assignments one and two? And we had some really great participation in level one. I had a blast uh, during the webinar, and we had a lot of participation in the discussion forum afterwards as well. So we are carefully reviewing your assignments one and two. So please keep an eye out for your responses in the Power Up forum this week. You guys have done a great job so far. Let me just tell you, you guys are nailing it. Okay. So no, but I will soon is the majority of the answer. We had some what assignments. If you're not sure what these assignments are, Abajoy, could you please launch the link to uh, the community? Or we can include these in, um, we have these in a toolkit in the discussion, uh, discussion forum. So uh, if you're not sure what these assignments are, don't worry, we will make sure that you have access to these so that you can watch recording one, uh, level one, and uh, take a look at these assignments to really make an impact with your donation form. Okay, and another poll for you. Do you have a donor engagement strategy? Since we're talking about donor engagement today, thank you all for participating in all these back to back to back questions. It's so great to get insight on uh, where our audience is within their fundraising journey. Okay, so the majority is looking like we're saying you don't have an engagement strategy yet. That's okay, so that's why we built this session. I am hoping by the end of this session, you're gonna feel a little less intimidated by the task and more inspired and you can really realize the impact, the great big impact that an engagement strategy is going to have on your nonprofit. All right. Thank you all so much for participating in those polls. So now with that, I want to talk about the power of a donor engagement cycle. So what is a donor engagement cycle? Well, before a donor ever gives to your organization, you're convincing them that your organization is worthy of their donation in the cultivation stage. And once you've properly cultivated that donor, you make your solicitation and you enter the second stage of the cycle. And then last but not least, you maintain a strong connection and relationship with your donor in the stewardship stage. Optimizing every step of the engagement cycle is the key to creating long lasting beneficial relationships with donors. And uh, according to a study from the Growth and Giving Initiative, uh, the Fundraising Effective Effectiveness Project, the average growth rate for new donors is 3.9%. In order to double your giving rate in five years, this number has to increase to 14.9%. So donor retention then is 
the key to increasing your contributed income. And donor engagement is the key to donor retention, right? But other benefits to focusing on donor engagement include allowing everyone, your board, your staff, your volunteers to get engaged and participate in fundraising and nurturing relationships with donors. This is a group effort. Uh, but it's important to note that the donor cycle, while a useful tool to start, can look a little different depending on the donor. Some donors might require more cultivation than others. Some donors who have already made it through the stewardship phase might need more cultivation to continue to give. Your best bet is to have a strong engagement strategy so every donor feels like their needs are being met through your organization, upping that trust factor. All right, so with one more sip of water, let's dig into some actionable tips to help you rethink and revamp your donor engagement. On to cultivation. You don't simply ask for $5,000 from a prospect with no prior contact, right? First, you have to get to know the donor, and the donor has to get to know you and your nonprofit. This is the stage when a prospective donor begins to grow more interested in your mission. Think of the cultivation stage as a job interview. You want to present yourself as the best candidate for their hard-earned donations. And whether you get the job, or the donation in this case, or not, depends on how both or how well um, your qualifications fit this donor and uh, if you're relevant to their interests and how well the interview went. So each touch point during the cultivation process represents a foundational building block of your donor engagement cycle. Which leads me to engagement tip number one, personalize your communications. Personalizing your communication to donors is an important step in the cultivation stage because it shows prospective donors that you value them. You take the time to curate your communications to suit their needs, interests, and demographics. And since the cultivation stage is where you wanna show donors your value, flooding them with communication that isn't relevant or interesting can be really counterproductive. But this isn't just a tip for the cultivation stage. Personalizing your communication can help foster strong donor relationships throughout the entire donor engagement cycle. So let's take a look at some ways that you can personalize your communication efforts to better engage current and prospective donors. First, segment your donors. Segmentation refers to being able to organize your donor list by a variety of factors, whether that's age, location, giving history, including giving amount, or anything else. Having a segmented donor list means that you can reach out to donors that fall into specific groups to streamline your communication process. Whether you're communicating with your donors through direct mail or snail mail, as I like to call it, or email, phone, or text, you can use your segmented lists to personalize each outreach to maximize your connection with donors. And this could be a webinar all on its own, so I'm not going to dive into the nitty gritty. What I will say is that you can use DonorBox's donor management functionality or a CRM like Salesforce to pull some of this data to help you with the segmentation. And how you segment is really up to you and your needs. If you're targeting um, a certain age group um, for, for donations, you can segment, segment by age if you have that information or by location if you are a uh, national or global organization and you want to segment by country or state, you, you can do that. Um, so there are many different ways that you can accomplish this, but this will really help you personalize your communications. And this one's pretty important. Communicate beyond just asking for donations. 
We all know how important making the ask is to bring to bring in more donations, but you can increase your donor engagement, especially with prospective donors by sending out informative, interesting communications like newsletters, event information, calls for volunteers, um, anything that's not centered around a solicitation. We're not at that stage yet. So remember our job interview analogy just a couple of minutes ago? You don't go into the interview and immediately list out your salary demands. Could you imagine that? You're, you should first show your interviewer what kind of employee you would make and what value you would bring to the company. And the same goes for your nonprofit. Show your donors the importance of the work that you are doing and the impact that it has before asking for a donation. And this screenshot I'm sharing came straight from my inbox, actually, from an amazing nonprofit called Upward Scholars. They help adult immigrants climb up the economic ladder. And they so happen to be donor box users as well. And I so enjoy getting their newsletters every month as they're packed full of images, videos, like on this screenshot here, and engaging stories and content. This is a great example of non-ask communication. However, I will note, you can't see the full screenshot here, but they also include their donate button at the bottom of every email, no matter what type of content they're sending, which uh, as we discussed in level one is really important. And see here, if you uh, can see the text, depending on what device you're on, uh, this email is to um, uh, celebrate uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. So I think that was a really lovely email that I got just a couple of days ago. And our next point, use the word you more than we use the word we. In fact, you should use the word you two times more than you use the word we. You is one of the top five most persuasive words in the English language for its ability to connect with the reader. Did you know that? So I have a challenge for you. Review your most recent appeal letter or email or even your cold call scripts if you do that. Do you use the words I or we more than you use the word you? That could mean that you're focusing too much on your nonprofit's needs and not enough on your donors. And that's something that a prospective donor notices. And as you can see here, use your donor's name. In a recent study about brain activation, scientists found that our brains light up when we hear our own name. And it makes sense, our names are our identities. There's nothing more personal than what we call ourselves. So when you use a donor's name in your communications with them, you're automatically connecting with them on a personal level. And another recent study, we love studies here, um, of 630 different organizations across 10 different industry verticals in nine countries shows that while many nonprofits have adopted digital strategies, only 45% of emails sent, or nearly 45% of emails sent, uh, didn't mention the donor or subscriber by name. And that is a lot of missed opportunity. This is a really easy one, so you don't miss this opportunity to connect with your donor. Okay. All right, so now that we've discussed some quick ways to sharpen your personalized communication skills, let's take a look at a tool that you already have access to that can help you easily implement these tips. But first, in true Jenna fashion, I have Another question for you, drop it in the chat for me. What tools do you use to communicate with your supporters? Do you um, use text messaging? Do you use a certain email platform? Do you use social media? Are you exclusively using snail mail? Let's see, I'm gonna take a look in the chat here. Social media, handwritten letters and emails, constant contact. Constant text email website, MailChimp, social media, snail mail, MailChimp, social media, email, lots of email and social media. That's about what I expected. Handwritten thank yous, very nice touch. Instagram, Flowdesk. 
donor box to do first thank you. That's awesome, Gabrielle. Phone call, snail mail, WhatsApp, iMessage, email. Awesome. So it sounds like you guys are pretty tapped in. This is great. Thank you so much for that insight. So oh, let me make sure I can move my slides around here. As you were probably suspecting, a great tool that you already have access to that you can use to communicate with your supporters is MailChimp. We offer an effortless integration with MailChimp. And with this, you can very easily sync your donors with your mailing list, use donor data to create personalized MailChimp campaigns for your donor types after you've segmented them, and you can stay in touch with all of your valued supporters. This is a really great tool. And this is how the integration works. Each time you receive a donation, DonorBox automatically exports that donor's information into the appropriate email campaign list in your MailChimp account. And we export your donor's first name, last name, and email address. It is just that easy. Um, so to note, the automatic sync depends on your campaign's mailing list settings. If your MailChimp campaign doesn't require donor consent for joining your mailing list, your donors are automatically exported to MailChimp. However, if your campaign does require the donor's consent, your donor must opt into the mailing list. But that's a nice feature to have. And why am I suggesting this tool? Well, the benefits of using email, and I think a lot of you have figured this out, to connect with your supporters is amazing. First of all, it's affordable and it's impactful. Email marketing is amazing with a 4,400% return on investment. 4,400% return on investment and $44 raised for every $1 spent, to put it simply. Emails are relatively easy to create, especially if you're a non-techie like me. Many platforms will help you create professionally designed platforms, have drag and drop features, add in some cool stuff, and other easy to use editors. So especially with MailChimp, sending emails is easier than ever. And emails deliver quick results. They reach your audience almost instantaneously. And in addition to that, email beats social media by 40 times for the customer acquisition. 40 times better than using social media for customer acquisition. And like I said, emails are very effective for fundraising. Some sectors garnered over 35% of their online revenue from email. Health organizations, 36%. Cultural organizations got their online revenue, 39% of that. And human rights organizations, 51% of their online revenue came from email. Plus, emails automatically help with your brand visibility. So even if a donor doesn't click through your links in your email or they delete the email, you're still tapping into donor psychology. They're going to see your logo. They're gonna to learn to recognize your logo. They might get used to your brand colors and they're gonna see your subject line. And whether they realize it or not, that's gonna live in their head. So very effective for brand visibility and recognition. And so that you can reap all the amazing benefits email has to offer, we've got this effortless MailChimp integration for both you and your donors. And better yet, you're thinking, oh, this sounds so good. How much is this gonna cost me? Well, MailChimp is free if you have less than 2,000 contacts. And the donor box integration add-on only costs $8 a month. You can't beat it. This is really, really great. And I just wanted to show you this really quick. Here are some great examples of emails, newsletters, campaigns sent through MailChimp. And uh, so if you take a close look, this first one says, hello and welcome, we're so happy to meet you. So this is when someone's opted in and donated for the first time. You should send that nice to meet you email right away. Uh, and here's an update on our progress. You should be sending these progress emails. You did it, thank you. You're celebrating your donor for the awesome impact that they're having. 
we need your support now. Your, you know, your call to action, your solicitation. And thanks in advance for sharing your thoughts. You're getting feedback. These are all things that are possible with the MailChimp integration. And to learn more, Abajoy, could you please drop the link for the MailChimp integration? There it is. So to learn more about our MailChimp integration, that is very easy, very effortless, go ahead and click there. And that will bring you to our landing page to give you um, all the info you need. We'll give it a second to let you click through and then we will move on. Okay, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Solicitation. There's a reason solicitation is at the center for the donor acquisition process. It's the point at which the donor decides your organization is the right one to receive their donation. Uh, in other words, this is the stage where you get the job. This is very exciting. Solicitation can take many shapes and forms. For a larger gift or a corporate donor relationship, you might make your ask in person. You might also collect in-person donations at an event. But the most common form of solicitation these days takes place online, of course, by email, social media, or through your website. But every donor has their own unique preferences for how to give, so it's important to be, it's important to offer other giving options by soliciting through direct mail, phone, and text. So we have some tips to help you rock your solicitation engagement so that you can make the most out of this important step. Engagement tip number two, meet your donors where they are. This tip is really straightforward. I've only got one slide for this. Uh, let's face it, your donors are busy. They have jobs, they have families, they have hectic lives, we all do. And that's why it's important for you to put in the effort to meet them where they are during this solicitation stage. And that means offering as many methods for your donors to give as possible. You wanna make it really easy for them. So as you get to know your donors better, you can understand what giving methods seem to be the most popular for your organization. Are most of your donations coming in online? Are you receiving a lot of mail-in donations? Are you receiving any social media donations? You can keep track of all this. And this is another factor where donor segmentation can come in handy. Once you have the data on your recurring donors and how they like to give and communicate, you can make your solicitations that much more personalized by targeting donors who like to give using certain methods. Which brings me to our next tool. Text to give is one fundraising method that meets donors where they are. And it empowers them to give to organizations via the smartphones using their phone's text application. They can donate to their favorite nonprofits very easily. So very simple on their smartphone. And it's perfect for on the spot donation drives, church offerings, concert fundraisers, conference donations, outdoor events, fundraising, letters, emails, really you can use text to give in any type of arena. Uh, and this is um, a very simple tool to use and it integrates sim seamlessly with your donor box account. So my next question for you, Abajoy, if you could please launch the poll. Are you using text to give? Or have you used it before? Wait for those responses to come in. So the majority I'm seeing now, that's actually what I was expecting. This is a pretty new uh, type of technology, but it's very easy. Again, any non-techie can integrate this into their DonorBox account. Okay, 
Well, I'm so excited for you guys to learn all about text to give then, especially since most of you are new to this type of uh, giving. So I have stats to back up why we love this. According to the nonprofit source, one in four donors use mobile devices to discover nonprofits they were previously unaware of. So your donors, your potential donors are already on their phones. You're meeting them where they are. 25% of donors complete their donations on their mobile devices already. I'm that person. Any donations I make, I do it on my phone. My phone never leaves my hand, except for right now. In the past year, mobile giving donations have increased by 205%. And we already know this. 90% of text message reminders are read in three minutes. The second my phone vibrates, I open it. Uh, raise your hand if you're the same way. Do you open your text messages super fast? Studies show that 90% of people do. And the average donation, <laughs> yeah, thanks. I feel very seen right now. <laughs> the average donation size for text to give fundraisers is $107. That's a good size donation. And uh, like I said, it takes people respond to text very quickly versus email, which takes about 90 minutes to respond. So needless to say, the the stats show that this is a platform that you should be taking advantage of. This is where a big percentage of your donors already are. So it is demo time. If you are based in the US right now, it is time to get out your smartphones and text the keyword Pongo to 801-801 to see the donor experience with text to give. And if you are not based in the US right now, don't worry, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that screen looks like. So uh, once you text this, you're not gonna get billed right away. You'll see the donor experience. So I wanna first give a special thanks to Pongo Poetry for letting us feature their campaign today. They are a Seattle-based nonprofit that uses personal poetry writing to heal youth who have experienced trauma and other difficult and complicated experiences. That is a really cool mission. And they are doing a great job at meeting their donors where they're at with our text to give add-on. I love this banner. So, all right, did you text the campaign? If you did, or even if you didn't, uh, for those of you who are not based in the US or not participating in the demo right now, this is similar to what your donor will see. Once you text your keyword to that short code, uh, your donors will receive a link and they will click it and they'll automatically be brought to your organization's donation form where they'll go through the easy three-step process to donate. Very simple. And once someone gives to your campaign via text to give with DonorBox, they can give again by simply sending the keyword yes. They'll be asked if they wanna give the same amount again and all they have to do is text confirm. They don't need to fill the form out again, which is a really nice feature. And that means that you can encourage donors to give again in an even quicker way than before. And the quicker the giving, the more likely you are to increase repeat donations and the more overall contributions you'll have. What do you guys think? Pretty easy, right? I see some questions about pricing. So this is where we are at. So first of all, all this integration requires is a donor box account, which you already have, most of you do maybe 30 minutes of setup and some vision and enthusiasm. And I know you guys already have vision and enthusiasm. You are a great group. So let's talk about the two plans. Our basic plan is uh, you can use it in US and Canada. And well, I wanna note though, if you are an organization based outside of the US and Canada, you can still use text to give but your donors will have to be based within the US and Canada to use the text to give. So anybody else, any donor outside of those regions will not be able to use it. Does that make sense? 
Uh, so our basic plan, you get a text to give number, the 1855 number, and this is available in the US and Canada, and you get a campaign ID that donors can text to trigger that link to pop up. You get unlimited text for unlimited campaigns, and this is $19 a month. With our brand new short code plan, you get everything in the basic plan with access to the 801-801 short code available in the US only, making it really easy for your donors to text and donate. And you also get a custom keyword assigned to one of your campaigns, like what Pongo Poetry was using. So uh, if your organization is a dog rescue, you could get creative and use the keyword bark or rough or pause, whatever that is. And that is $50 a month. And the ability to create custom keywords is very attractive to some organizations because it builds on your brand and memorable words, like I just said. So to activate this feature, uh, all you have to do is go to your add-ons tab in your dashboard and select your preferred text to give plan. And Abajoy, if you could please launch the guide, uh, the link so that folks can learn more about our text to give. And again, uh, if you are an organization based outside of the US and Canada, you can still use this, but this will be an avenue to connect with your donors within the US and Canada. Um, only folks who are in the US and Canada, depending on your plan, um, will be able to text this number for you to receive donations from them. And there's the link. Okay. And I see Sophie is helping out with some of the questions based around text to give. Thank you, Sophie. All right, are we ready to move on? Perhaps my favorite section here, stewardship. You've gone to the interview. You've gotten the job, woohoo, and now what? Now you have to show up every day for work and keep performing at the standards you promised and go above and beyond expectations. Stewardship then refers to the relationship building and communications that take place after a gift has been received. You are being a good steward of your donor's expectations and more importantly, of their donation. You want to show them that they made the right choice in supporting your organization. This stage is just as important as the solicitation stage because a properly stewarded donor relationship can result in lifetime donors who give to your organization again and again and again. So how do you communicate with donors who have reached the stewardship stage? Well, we're gonna take a look at how to create a system for recognition. The purpose of donor recognition is to give your donors a unique and personalized experience. Whether you're reaching out with a phone call or thanking them through an email, it is crucial to make sure, sure that, that you show your appreciation and support. This builds long lasting trust with your donors. One of the top five reasons why donors stop giving is because their support did not get acknowledged by a nonprofit. Don't let this happen. Having a proper donor recognition system can result in three important benefits for your nonprofit. Increasing your donor retention. When your donors feel properly acknowledged, they're more likely to support your organization again. Current donors are motivated to give again and again and give more. A donor is more likely to give when they feel their gift makes a difference. So through recognition, you can remind them of their gift and the true value that it has on your mission. And social proof leads to even more donations. When people see that their friends, family, and coworkers are supporting your cause, they're more likely to believe in your mission and the important work and decide to get involved themselves. So 
how do you rec how do you recognize your donors? And if not, how maybe when do you recognize your donors? Is there a certain moment within your donor life cycle uh, that you always make sure to reach out reach out and recognize them? Drop in the chat. What does your donor recognition look like? Handwritten thank you notes, very nice. A personal phone call. Handwritten thank yous, that's a big response. Immediate thank you via donor box, great. You do it in a personalized way, that's perfect. Personalized, personalized, personalized. T-shirts, high quality stickers, handwritten thank yous. Love a good swag package. Email or phone. Letters and postcards. Immediate thank you. Donor box thank you and a letter typed up for thank yous and sometimes a card with a child's picture on it. Love it. Well, it looks like you guys are doing a great job already, but I, hopefully I can uh, trigger some new ideas as well. So a great way to recognize your donors is through enabling your donor wall for your campaign, especially if you got that crowd funding page up and running, you were feeling inspired after level one. Enable your donor wall. A donor wall is an easy, automated way to make your donors feel appreciated and validated right away after making a donation. And again, it's a win-win for you because you're adding some social proof there. Pretty straightforward, right? And then I saw that some of you were using this already. Send automated donation receipts. These serve as an instant thank you. And charitable deductibility is a big incentive for donors. With DonorBox, you can customize and automate donation receipts with a blink of an eye. It's really easy, right, you guys? And once a donation comes in through an online form, DonorBox automatically emails the receipt to the donor. No stress and no hassle. And I think some of you are doing this as well. Get creative with your thank yous. Thank you notes are not just a common courtesy. They're also a powerful, proven way to encourage your donors to give again and again. But sometimes our thank yous can feel a bit stale and not nearly as special as the gift that they represent. So go beyond your regular thank you email. Jazz it up with a thank you image or a video. Give your donors a phone call or feature them in your newsletter or on your social media. On the screen is a nice example from actually a brand new DonorBox user. Dream On Purpose is a nonprofit whose mission is to empower young girls to actualize their dreams. And they created social media banners to give a shout out to each one of their donors during the amazing give this year. This is a really nice and simple way to show appreciation. And again, adding that social proof, it's a win-win. So to help you with this, we've geared assignment three for level two around how to create an automated thank you and donation receipt so that you can customize very quickly and easily with DonorBox and acknowledge your donors immediately after they make a donation. And Avajoy already launched that link for us. If you go up to your right hand side, you'll see a tab that says handouts and that assignment will be available right there. And okay, the point of this one is don't be afraid to get creative, to design a really memorable and personal moment for your donor. And speaking of moments, you need to reach out to your donors at the right time. Which brings me to feature tool number three, our moments feature. So imagine this scenario with me. A donor increases the recurring donation to $100 a month in March. But three months later in June, they receive a thank you letter. Three months later. By that time, receiving a thank you letter from you may even evoke some like negative emotions, right? Your donor may ask, why did they wait so long to send me this? Or did increasing my donation plan not matter to them? 
Instead, you should acknowledge any changes or moments within your donor's life cycle as soon as possible. If you wait too long, reaching out may lose its impact. After a couple of weeks, like it or not, your donor may have moved on. So a great donor box tool to help creating this system of recognition is the moments feature. Moments are triggered notifications created upon certain donor activities or events, such as a first year anniversary. So what I like to call donate anniversaries, a cancel and a reoccurring donation, a first time donation, and a change in their reoccurring donation to a higher amount, higher amount than before. So you get triggered for uh, these, these notifications are triggered for all of these events. And this will help you up your donor engagement, send those personalized updates, and communicate more effectively with your donors. So here's an up close look at what the moments feature looks like right there in your donor dashboard. This view is filtered by first one-time donation, but you can also filter by those other categories that I just mentioned, and uh, also by na uh, name and date. So to learn more about our super easy, super cool, super intuitive moments feature, Abajoy, would you please launch our next link? And this is included, this is already included in your donor dashboard, this is not an add-on. Thank you. So, like I said, once you have these insights about your donors that the Donor Box Moments feature gives you, you need to act on it. Create personalized emails using MailChimp, banners in Canva, images or videos to say thank you, or to acknowledge those moments in your donor's life cycle. Your supporters will truly feel like you appreciate, they're gonna appreciate the extra mile that you've gone to check in and appreciate them. And Perhaps a donor cancels your recurring donation. Use this information to send a note to thank them for the support that they've given and the impact they've had thus far and offer different opportunities to stay involved, such as a volunteer event or simply staying in the loop by subscribing to your newsletters or following your organization on social media. If a supporter has donated for the first time, you can welcome them to the family and let them know how they're creating an impact. So you get the idea. I made this little example here, happy donate anniversary. So it can be just that simple. Okay, I know we covered a lot here. We've made it to the end, but it is, for you and your donors, it's just the beginning. Building trusting relationships with your donors is the key to lifelong support. And in order to do that, you must have a solid donor communication and engagement strategy. This is so important. So you need to get to know your donors. Segment your donors in a way that makes sense for your organization, whether that's by donation amount, donation frequency, age, location. And once you have that data, personalize, personalize, personalize tailor your messages for your donors, and use DonorBox's MailChimp integration to easily streamline your communication processes, which saves you time. Meet your donors where they are, which is on their mobile devices. So take advantage of that and use our text to give feature to provide another quick and easy way for your donors to give. And finally, create a system of recognition and use our moments feature to acknowledge all of those important events in your donor's life cycle, from their first donation to their first anniversary to a change in a donation plan. If you implement all these tips and tools within your donor engagement strategy, you'll attract new donors who truly believe in your mission, build trusting relationships from the moment they make their very first donation, and motivate your donors to continue creating an impact because they feel so valued. And you'll build a community of supporters that you can depend on for a lifetime. So before we go into Q&A, 
I want to remind everyone that we have created video tutorials for many of our donor box tools and features, such as donation receipts, text to give, and crowdfunding. And you can find all of them on our YouTube channel. Abajoy just launched that link. So if you haven't already, follow the link that we just launched so that you can subscribe and stay up to date on all of our latest YouTube content, including those tutorials, our webinar recordings, inspirational nonprofit interviews, and pro tips for nonprofits like fundraising tips. How are we feeling, everyone? Before we hop into Q&A, are we feeling ready to power up our donor engagement? Test out some new tools? Energize, thumbs up. Cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, we are going to go ahead and move into our Q and A. But don't forget to join us for level three next Tuesday, September 28th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm moving over to my questions tab. Give me one moment. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and start at the bottom. As a 501c3, what are the benefits of crowdfunding? Well, the great thing about crowdfunding is that it is um, especially useful for one-off campaigns. So anything like Giving Tuesday or year-end campaigns, you can use crowdfunding. We covered a lot about crowdfunding in level one, uh, so be sure to check out that recording. We also have some really great resources on crowdfunding in our donor box knowledge community. Uh, it's a great way to tell your story build social proof, appreciate your donors, get subscribers to your email list all in one tidy page, and it takes just 15 minutes to get going. Um, so let me, hang on, I have some notifications in my way. So Elisa, or Eliza, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, uh, can you further explain how to recognize donors using the donor wall? Uh, so yes, it is not just a place where donors leave messages, although it is. So a donor wall is a really great way um, kind of for donors to have bragging rights. It's, uh, it feels good to donate and let people know that you've donated sometimes. So there's the perk of them being able to donate, say some nice words about your organization, and know that their donation is being recognized automatically. And again, it's creating that social proof. If Jane saw that her good friend Bobby donated to your organization and she reads a really nice comment that he left about your organization, she's going to feel more compelled to give using that donor wall. Again, it's just a great way to highlight the donors who have already supported you in a really easy automated way. Navigating back over to our Q&A. Thanks for bearing with me all. We have a lot coming in. Yes, Linda, the donor wall is within DonorBox. And you can activate that uh, very easily, especially within your crowdfunding pages. It is a really nice feature. Thanks all as I scroll through. So, um, Lucero, can you write automated emails with the moments feature, or do you have to list, uh, you have to get the list of the changes and write the messages elsewhere? So these are just notifications for you. So uh, whether you check your moments once a week or every day, uh, you can see who's donated for the first time or who has changed their plan. And then from there, you can go ahead and create your email templates or your whatever way you'd like to recognize those moments uh, based off of that. I'm scrolling through you all. Thank you for bearing with me. Keep those questions coming. 
I think Abjoy and Sophie did a great job asking those questions or answering those questions throughout the webinar. Any more questions for me? Let's see, we have some more hopping in too. Hopping into our uh, question section. Rowan, uh, no, you cannot reply to donors on the donor wall. However, you can always send them a nice email to reply and say, thanks for leaving such a nice comment. And uh, Jeanette, if you've activated the donor wall, can you add comments from it from previous donors? I'm actually not sure about that one. Sophie, if you could chime in there, um, that would be great. And uh, Jeanette, if we don't get the answer for you now, um, I will make sure uh, that we answer that for you. Okay, any more questions coming in? This was an easy crowd today. Are we feeling excited about our donor engagement? Do we have any questions about personalization or any more about our tools? Are we feeling motivated? I like it, thumbs up and party poppers. I think that's what you call them. Okay, well, you know what? We've got two more minutes in this session, so I'm gonna hang out and tell, just in case we have any more questions rolling in, and uh, everyone, before you log off, I wanna remind you, log back in next Tuesday, September 28th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for level three, how to manage your donors and track growth. This is gonna be a really, really good one. And I wanna thank all of you for joining us today for all that you do for your community and for your big hearts. And we are really proud to uh, help you help others. Thanks so much, everyone. That was a fun session. And we have a lot of questions about the donor wall. So I'll be sure to add some helpful links in the discussion forum. Be sure to join the Power Up discussion forum. We just launched that link there. You will have access to the level one recording and toolkit. You will get access to the level two recording and assignment and toolkit. So we've got the slide deck there. We've got the recording. We've got the assignments. Go ahead, join now. That's gonna be in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen to uh, stay up to date and participate in our discussion forum with our community managers and our peers. Okay. All right, everyone, thank you again for all that you do and for joining us today. I will see you next time.